We have uh, <clears throat> Jine Gala, who is Associate Director, India Ratings and Research, joining us on the uh, line uh, to discuss the impact, of course, on uh, what's happening. Uh, we also have uh, Rikin Shah, Vice President at IFL Securities, here in our studios to take us through uh, what the implications could be. Guys, hi, uh, good morning. Uh, Rikin, if I can come, with, uh, come to you first. Is, you know, something was expected on personal loans. We, by the way, here, I remember I'd done a uh, panel discussion on, in August, back mm. in August, and uh, there was yeah. Mr. Jairam Sridharan of Piramal Finance, who I think for the first time yeah. on, on a public platform had said that there is a credit cycle coming for personal loans, unsecured loans. Yeah. And then, of course, we kind of followed through that with the story, etc. So on personal loans, perhaps something was expected. But this seems to be bigger than that, right? Sure. Uh, so thanks for having me here today. Uh, so as you rightly pointed out, the impact on the personal loan was well known and flagged in the market. Mm. What was not perhaps anticipated by the market was increase in the risk weights for the NBFC exposures of the banks as well. Mm. Uh, credit card uh, risk rates have also gone up. Uh, they were already at 125 for the banks. It's going up to 150% now. So from that perspective, the incremental negative surprise for the street would be on the NBFC exposure of the banks and the credit card risk rates also going up. Mm. So, you know, let's just take that uh, step by step. I think everyone's trying to uh, now... Uh, grapple with, first of all, what's going to be the added uh, capital requirement, if at all, because of uh, higher risk weight. So let's deal with banks first. Sure. They have to deal with the personal uh, loan exposure, credit card exposure, and the NBFC exposure. Uh, who get hits the most? Sure. So for banks, uh, the way we think about it is that uh, the impact is going to be on the three lines, mm -hmm. personal loans, credit cards, and NBFCs. Mm -hmm. Uh, the NBFC lending of the banks is also meaningful proportion at 10 to 15 percent of the loans for different banks. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of the exposure to these segments, uh, for the banks it is around 10 to 30 percent of their loans. And if you think about the impact on the capital, which is the CET1, it ranges anywhere between 50 to 100 basis points uh, even after taking into account the exposure on NBFCs. Okay, so again just to expand on that point, uh, if uh, And for the sake of clarity, right now we're clubbing this. We're clubbing yes. personal car, personal loans, credit cards and uh, the exposure to NBFCs. Who is at 30%? Uh, which are the banks which would be... And therefore, they're exposed sure. the most and then the follow-up question would be, then do, will they have to raise capital? Which are the big lenders? So among the banks that we track and cover, the lenders where the exposure is higher to these segments will be your ICICI Bank, RBL, IDFC First Bank, SBI, this would be the top four or five banks among the banks who have highest exposure. Mm -hmm. And consequently, the impact on the capital will also be relatively higher. So they would be on the higher end of the range of 40 to 100 basis points that I spoke about. Mm -hmm. If you look at the NBFCs, the impact on the capital would be anywhere from 30 basis points to 450 basis points. It's a very big spectrum out there. On the higher end of the NBFC exposure, the impacted ones would be SBI cards, Bajaj Finance and Punawala where the risk weight increase uh, would be higher and hence the CET1 impact would be higher. Mm. So I guess, uh, you know, it's a three-part a three part impact, right? Once it hits the tier one, second factor, it could limit growth. And the third factor is the cost of borrowing, cost of funds as well sure. are likely to go up. So, you know, the, a lot of these stocks are going to be under some pressure, Rick, in today. So our audience will be wondering, is this providing a bit of a buying opportunity? If yes, are there select stocks that we will be watching out for? Sure. So, you know, before I enter the uh, stock level discussion, what I would like to highlight is that we are focusing on first order impact right now. Right. The second order impact for the financials will actually be in three parts. First one is your the growth slowdown for both banks and NBFCs. Please remember, these loans were growing at 25 to 40 percent for different lenders in the recent quarters. Mm. So that growth starts to slow down. In fact, there is already evidence that the approval rates for the existing to bank and new to credit customers have started going down for the last couple of quarters. And some of the NBFCs have already started talking about scaling back on the growth. So that's the first impact. The second impact is the higher cost of funding for NBFCs because the banks to protect their uh, ROWAs on their exposure to NBFCs, they'll increase the pricing on the NBFC loans. Now for NBFCs, uh, 50 to 80 percent of their borrowings come from the banks, right. and hence any increase on the risk weights on the pricing there would result into higher funding cost and margins. And the third point is on the asset quality, where we believe that the asset quality impact at this point in time should be limited mainly for the fintechs, NBFCs who originate loans via fintechs, right. and some of the select uh, banks. So would you uh, you were wanted to answer the second point as well? You know, maybe you'll look at entering select stocks, few select. Ones. Sure. Um, so, uh, among the names, among the banks or NBFCs who have lower exposure to these segments and higher capital ratios would be the ones where 
uh, we would be selectively more optimistic. What we prefer among the banks is HDFC Bank, Indescent, and Excess. Among the NBFCs, we prefer Bajaj Finance. Okay, well, uh, you know, just as you thought that interest rates are starting to come off, etc., and NBFC, it'll be a good cycle for NBFCs. Uh, there is a bit of a speed breaker, and maybe rightly so, right? And the RBA has been worried about this for some time. Uh, let's also welcome in uh, Jine Gala, uh, who's been uh, holding on. Uh, Jine, uh, good morning. Good to have you with us here, and thanks for waiting. Uh, you know, your, your first sense, you heard uh, Rickin, and I'm assuming that uh, a lot, uh, your thoughts perhaps would uh, broadly match, but uh, are the implications in terms of system-wide loan growth, etc., much larger than what one, one would have assumed uh, before what the RBI did yesterday? Sure. Well, good morning to everyone. I think so. This measure would definitely have some impact on the growth front. As you have seen, the NBFC growth was led uh, by growing at around 18 to 20 percent in FI23, and the growth momentum was still continuing. And if you look at the unsecured credit growth uh, to the total sanctions, that growth has been somewhere around 25 to 30 percent. So definitely the unsecured lending was fueling the growth for the sector and this regulatory clampdown would definitely have some impact on the growth front and also uh, would also lead to rise in the borrowing cost for NBFCs as it was highlighted uh, in the earlier discussion. Uh, we see there could be a three-leg approach which could play out where the NBFCs who have gained in size and scale of late where if you see the growth rates of few large NBFCs has been around 25 to 30% kind of a growth rate, where those NBFCs' ability to mobilize incremental borrowings could come under challenge, where their share of the bank borrowings used to be around 30 to 40%, which incrementally we see uh, could come at a higher cost, and that would definitely lead to a uh, rise in the overall cost of funding for the sector. And the ability to pass on this rising funding cost to the end borrowers would also need to be seen. Uh, so there could be definitely a margin pressure for both banks and NBFCs as this segment was largely contributing to the delta on the margin front. And incrementally, we also see that could be a substantial rise in capital raising across banks and NBFCs, uh, which could again lead, uh, 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 since there would be a capital consumption of around 25 to 50 basis point, uh, varying across our rated issuers. Uh, and also a lot of the covenants are also getting built on the leverage front, where we see that there could be an incremental need by a few of the lenders to raise capital uh, 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 based on the current raise in the risk weights. So definitely the, the growth and the capital buffers uh, needs to be monitored going forward. Uh, hi, good morning. I'm sure you're still doing your numbers. It's very early in the morning. But could you, uh, you know, help us put a number to it, just from a big picture perspective. Let's say if we're talking about total credit offtake across the banking sector, you know, I don't know what that number was for you before this action. So say if it was 10, does it go down to 8? Uh, and the question is sort of hinged on uh, the idea of whether credit offtake from the corporate side can make up for the slowdown that we are probably going to see on uh, unsecured retail now. Yeah, uh, so on the overall front, on the growth side for the banks, I think so there could be some amount of pressure at least by 100 to uh, 200 basis points uh, on the overall spectrum uh, based on the current measure. Uh, having said that, uh, the growth, whether that growth could be filled by the corporate loan growth, I think so the environment for corporate lending is uh, good, but definitely uh, the margins which are available on the unsecured side would not be available on the corporate side. So that would lead to some amount of pressure on the margin front for the banks uh, who would be recalibrating their exposure towards the corporate side. And also, uh, this unsecured piece also provided a lot amount of free flow to the NBFCs also, uh, uh, NBFCs and also on the banks, largely on the liability side. For the banks, uh, the customers who are on the unsecured side would also uh, bring in some amount of deposits and the liability front. Uh, that could also come under pressure as the sector is already witnessing a slowdown in the CASA uh, ratios. Uh, going forward, we see that pressure could further increase to a certain extent, which could again lead to rise in the funding cost and, and the cost of mobilizing of liability for banks and NBFCs. You know, uh, the last numbers that I have, it's uh, basically uh, banks, uh, total banks, personal, and uh, Rickin uh, and uh, uh, Jine, you can confirm, but uh, to the total banking sector personal loan book stood at about 40, 43 lakh crores, approximately 43 lakh crores. The unsecured percentage out of that was between 33 and 34 percent, right? Of course, the total banking lending book is much larger. It's 140 lakh crores, uh, sure. but personal loan was about 43, and out of that, 33 to 34 percent is unsecured. Those are numbers from a few months back, but I think valid still. Abhishek is still with us, our uh, 
uh, sort of, uh, you know, <clears throat> internal uh, banking expert. Abhishek, uh, I mean, come in. You've been looking at this uh, closely. You know, you've been on conference calls, uh, listening to managements, asking questions. And bank and NBFC, everybody in the second quarter, the first question which has been posted to them was about the personal loan segment and, uh, you know, what's been happening there. Uh, well, yes, uh, you know, uh, unsecured loans had been rising. I uh, wanted to ask uh, one question to Rinking. Uh, you know, NBFC has moved away from money market to banks for borrowings over the last one, one and a half year as interest rates started to rise. So, you know, they shifted to banks. Uh, how much will the cost of funds get impacted for these uh, segment of lenders, uh, given the fact that they'll again go back to money market uh, where, you know, the interest rates are already on the elevated side? So, Abhishek, a fair question. So, at this point in time, if you look at the incremental cost of funding for NBFCs from bank borrowings or from the bond markets, it's pretty similar. In fact, uh, the bank borrowings would be 20, 30 basis points cheaper. But the bigger point here to make is now the banks will start raising the price on this uh, loans given to NBFCs because currently the uh, uh, risk weights on the NBFCs which are rated A and above is only 20 to 50%. Now, as the risk weights increase by 25 percentage point, for the banks to protect their return on risk weighted assets, theoretically, they'll need to raise rates as high by 200, 250 basis points as well. But our interactions with the banks and the NBFCs last night suggest that the increase would be to the tune of 50, 100 basis points for the bank loans for all the NBFCs. Uh, Rikin, just very quickly, the numbers again. Uh, margin compression across NBFCs, just the overall range and, and for banks as well. Just the margin hit that we're so, talking about. So the margin hit will be higher for NBFCs, NBFCs. and not as much for the banks. Yeah. The banks is a second order impact wherein the increase in the yields on the loans from unsecured, that benefit will no that longer will accrue away. to them. Yeah. But for the NBFCs, as I highlighted, if the funding cost on the bank borrowings increased by 50, 60 basis points, mm -hmm. And this bank borrowings are typically 40-50%. So we are looking at 30-40 basis points of margin impact for NBFCs if this uh, rate increases were to happen. So in a way, any uh, sort of help from falling interest rates, future fallen interest rates gets nullified by, uh, by this. I That's mean, true. Looks like it, right? Yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Rikin. Very clear and uh, very hey, helpful. helpful. Yeah. Thank, thank you for joining thank in. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. And of course, Janae as well. Thank you very much uh, for uh, joining in here this morning. I think...